Welcome back. Time now for us to dig into the newspapers and we're joined by political scientist and director of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana, Dr. Kwavi Asasanti. But before I bring him into the fray, this segment is brought to you, as always, by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. Here's what they're offering you. If you're a man, you've hit over 30, over 40, they're offering you prostate screening for free. If you've never got yourself checked, you're walking on that slippery, very slippery slope. If you're a woman and you'd like to know your fertility status, also make tracks to Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic and they'll take care of you for free. They'll actually conduct the analysis for uh, free. And here's where you can locate them. Here in Accra, they at Spintex opposite the Shell signboard. There's Kumasi Kronumabwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex. There's Takradi Anadji State. That's where you can locate them. Back in the Greater Accra region, they are in Tema Community 22. There's Tichiman Hanswa and Esiyama and Zima. Their call lines, 244 867-068 or 0274-234-321. End point homeopathic clinic, the end to chronic disease. Well, time now for us to dig into the papers and we have joining the conversation, Dr. Kwame Asasanti. Good morning, Doc. Hello, Doc. Can you hear me? Okay, so, uh, Doc, if you can hear me, I, I, I figure the connection is not too good because you've been with us, but um, hopefully we can work on that connection and get everything sorted out quickly so we can have you join uh, the conversation. But for those of you listening, Ghana for this morning, I, I indulge you to shoot your messages through and let me know what you think about the minority's stance. The 21-day ultimatum that has been given uh, the, the governor of the Bank of Ghana, together with some others in the central bank, to step down, to resign, basically, over the 61 billion Ghana city debt that has been incurred. I mean, I don't remember the last time we incurred such a debt. But some of the, the points made, the, the point to the Bank of Ghana's recklessness and mismanagement, citing a staggering 97.4 million Ghana cities, which was spent on foreign and domestic travels in 2022 alone. And this in itself is according to the Bank of Ghana's own annual report and financial statement. They point to the Bank of Ghana's recklessness and mismanagement, pointing to a colossal amount of 357.9 million Ghana cities, which was spent on banking supervision, banking supervision, while other expenses co constituted a huge 287.8 million Ghana cities of taxpayers' money. They talk about the 60.8 billion Ghana City loss, which is about $6 billion, which is twice what we're going to the IMF for. And maybe just to wrap with this and not move on, maybe when Doc joins the conversation, I'll walk through more of them. The Bank of Ghana flouted its own law, Act two, that is Act 2002, Act 612 uh, from the year 2002, and Amendment Act 2016, that is Act 918, which requires the governor to notify parliament where advances to government exceed 5% of the previous year's total revenue. These are some of the matters. Now, when some of these come up, I would prefer that we discuss them dispassionately, taking off whatever political lenses we may be wearing. Because I've noticed over time that whatever issues you discuss, there would be people who would definitely look at it, not from the straight and narrow, not from the middle lane, but always from NDC perspective, NPP perspective. But ask yourself, as a citizen, of this land. If you look at these sums of money, comparatively, are they, do we have value for money? Those are the questions we ought to be asking. Do we have value for money? And some of the sums that we hear, not just from the Bank of Ghana, but from other institutions of state, we spent X amount, even Shraj, even Shraj, because yesterday I was talking about Shraj, my own friend heads that institution, but even Shraj, yesterday from the Auditor General's report, we had to look at those the nitty-gritty in those, and that is how we are going to be able to mop up more funds for the state's kitty, which can then be used, invested in health infrastructure, in road infrastructure, in other sectors of our economy. If we don't do that, then we might as well even stop, you know, talking about any national life or any prospects for Ghana, because then, what are the prospects, really? Well, let's get into uh, the papers now as we still try to connect with Dr. Kwame Asasanti. I would... Um, think that if we can't get him on Zoom, which would be the preferred choice, we might as well hear his voice on phone. 
uh, which would be the next best option. The Daily Graphic this morning. Graphic road in Sorry State. Uh, piles of refuse on some pavements along the Graphic Road. And uh, this is the, the city that is hoping to be the cleanest in Africa. It's an eyesore when you go to many parts of um, the country and you take a look at what is happening. But there's also the story. Lottery wins attract 10% uh, tax. That story also uh, there uh, takes effect August the 15th. Then there is this other one. Ongoing BECE, why it picks up seven teachers for exam malpractice. That story also uh, making the cut. And then Parliament for serious business, Nanankitsia says so. We'll be finding out why he's been saying that. On the back page of the paper, Ghana risks losing $30 million from global TB funding. And there's also drug theft, three Bolgatanga hospital staff remanded. Um, that story, an interesting one, about hospital staff themselves perpetrating theft. Anyway, uh, Doc, it's good to have you back on the conversation, this time via phone. I hope you're well. I am very well, and yourself? By God's grace, it's another day. I feel better than I did yesterday. I've been under the weather, but uh, I'm grateful to God for a better day today in terms of health. You'll be fine. I'll pray for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. I, I was just walking through. I don't know whether you've seen the calls of the minority for the, the central bank's governor to step down. But among other things, let me quickly rehash for you so we can quickly, quickly make tracks. Okay. They are saying that they're going to be literally picketing. They've given a 21 day ultimatum, following which they are going to uh, go besiege, so to speak, the central mm -hmm. bank calling for the, the bank's governor and some others to step down. And here's why. They cite a staggering, so they talk about recklessness and mismanagement, citing a staggering 97.4 million Ghana cities spent on foreign and domestic travel in 2022 alone. And this is according to the bank's own annual report. They cite the bank's recklessness and mismanagement, where a, a colossal amount of 357.9 million Ghana cities was spent on banking supervision and... Um, while other expenses constituted, and other expenses is a gray area, you don't know what exactly is there, constituted a huge 287.8 million Ghana cities of taxpayers' money. They talk about further recklessness and mismanagement in respect of the 60.8 billion Ghana cities uh, that was lost on the back of the DDEP. And the equivalent of that, of course, $6 billion, and that's twice as much as we're going to the IMF for, they accused the Bank of Ghana of flouting its own law from the year 2002, Act 612, uh, which requires the governor to notify Parliament where advances to government exceed 5% of the previous year's total revenue. Also in their Act 918 of 2016. It goes on and on. But for you, from where you sit, uh, is this a step at ensuring further accountability? when it comes to governance and when it comes to the management of the purse of our country? Or is it just politics ad infinitum? I'm not sure it's just uh, politics, Ben, uh, because, um, one, the Bank of Ghana um, was established by law. Right. And it has to work within the framework of the law. So if the bank has its own rules and regulations guiding its conduct and it flout them with impunity, everybody must stand up and be counted on this and rise up to criticize, right? So what you are doing is in tandem or is in line with the spirit of our constitution where you have the preamble of the constitution that, that we believe in accountability and we believe in what probity, that holders of political power or any uh, you know, public office holder, at the point in time, you'll be called to answer questions for your actions and inactions. So I think that this is nothing but what a part of the, the process of ensuring what? Good governance and ensure that there's accountability and all that. Two, if you look at uh, the figures they are talking about, um, it's mind-boggling uh, that you have uh, travel allowances of 97.6 uh, million and you have... Um, 
you know, other expenses, which is not explained, 87.8 million Ghana. I think Ghanaians deserve answers to this. All that they are asking for is what? Answers. <clears throat> and that uh, they want to ensure uh, that those who are put in that office are answerable to the people who put them there. That's all. For me, there's nothing wrong with that. Let's delve into uh, the papers and later maybe I'll run by you one of our news items this morning where a DCE and a member of parliament are fighting literally over the installation of a traffic light and whether politics hasn't simply engulfed uh, this country to the point where we cannot see beyond our political eyebrows, uh, so to speak. Uh, I'll bring you that tussle. I'm just noting it down so I don't forget to bring it back to you. But the Daily Graphic this morning, Graphic Road in Sorry State, uh, uh, lottery wins attract 10% tax, and then they talk about the ongoing BC and Parliament for serious business in Lancashire. So let's get into the stories. Wins from lottery games, casinos, and marketing promotional raffles will now attract a 10% tax with effect from August the 15th, 2023. This means that gross winnings from all betting, gaming, lotto, and other games of chance will be sub subjected to a 10% tax withholding tax, which will be considered as a final tax. In addition, the gross gaming revenue, that is the GGR, which is the amount generated from all stakes less uh, the winnings, will also be subjected to 20% withholding tax. The Ghana Revenue Authority uh, is hoping to mobilize about 1.2 billion Ghana cities in the initial stages of the implementation of the taxation of lottery operators. I, 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 it's just got me thinking, and let me get to... Um, Something I saw recently, I don't know the last time maybe you went anywhere to eat or something, but sometimes you look at the staggering tax build-up and you begin to wonder. Everything is being taxed. This is the latest one taking off from August the 15th. But imagine this. Someone goes to purchase a phone. The phone <laughs> is worth 1,390 CDs and 48 pesos. Now, if you look at the taxes on the phone, COVID levy, 1%, that is 13 CDs, 90 pesos. NHIL, 2.5%, 30 34.76 CDs. Get Fund, 2.5%, and we have our own issues with that. But recently, at least, some of that is being uh, attached to local institutions and scholarships. That is 30, another 34.76%. VAT, 15%, 221.09 CDs. Total taxes, 304 CDs and 52 pesos, bringing the total sum from 1,390, so let's even round it up to 1,400, to a staggering 1,695. That is the tax component. Now, here's another one, at least for those who partake in the lotteries and all of that. What do you make of it? I think that um, we have been educated on nuisance tax. Mm. And I'm sure all of us are alive to this fact. That these things kill what industrial uh, action, uh, industrial activities, right. and it doesn't ensure productivity. Apart from that, it is disincentive uh, to work and the rest of them. Why are we still having? That? I'm sure that uh, we heard a lot from Dr. Baumia, and we expect him to do something about this. Otherwise, that talk about nuisance tax and all that, I would take it like a mere propaganda statement which I'm not sure it is. So if that was true then, it should be true now. And that we expect that all these taxes will go down and create that enabling environment. Okay. Grow their business, people to be able to what, make use of their mega salaries to make ends meet. We are in difficult times. So if you compound the situation with a lot of taxes, then you are sending us to our grief uh, ahead of uh, what the time that God has given to us. I think that is unfair, and it doesn't speak well for a government which want to really make sure that we all earn uh, meaningful uh, ways of what uh, living our lives. It is not fair. And the earlier they did something about this, the better. All right, so let's get into some other stories now. Page 16 is where I am headed next. And uh, let's just get to the yes, 16th page. Graphic road in Sorry State. Uh, Doc, we've had opportunity to talk about some of these scenarios. And here we are again, another one. 
Uh, as Accra continues with its physical infrastructural development, its streets, some of them once prestigious thoroughfares, are now a pale shadow of what they used to be in the nation's capital. The graphic road spanning the intersection at the Kwame Nkrumah Avenue to the Obeja Bilamte interchange appears to have lost the shine of an acclaimed major street, now riddled with rubbish, a weedy median, malfunctioning traffic lights, and vandalized drain gratings along the stretch. It also contends with a makeshift market near the graphic press house and haphazard commercial ventures dotted on the pavements. Now to boot, tons of rubbish are generated from the activities of foodstuff traders, particularly on the walkway near the graphic press house, and scrap dealers while squatters add to the unsightly situation. Now, there is also an apparent stealing of metal gratings on drain chambers that allow rainwater to flow into storm drains, which is a recurring problem. You know, when you go to other countries, it, it is well nigh impossible for you to see stuff like this, where even the metal gratings and stuff can be stolen. No supervision. No one knows about it. And God forbid that it rains heavily, for example, Doc, and you're walking on any of these stretches. I remember there was a day it had rained heavily and roads were flooded and I was walking. I was going to walk through a specific place. It took someone screaming at me, don't. You know why? Of course, I wasn't too familiar with that route. There was one of these drains that was open and the person from a vantage point saw me and prompted me. Now, some other time when I went and passed there, I saw it and realized what the person had been talking about. If, imagine, so flood water taken over the place. Of course, you're, 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 it's water close somewhere along your legs, but you're waiting through because you must get to the next point before maybe you can get a vehicle. But you don't know there's a hole there. You, you fall into it like that, the possibility of drowning, losing your life. But that is situation normal in a car. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It is very sad. Very sad, Ben. Uh, sometimes I ask myself whether we have institutions in this country. We do have, but they are on paper. Because if institutions were alive, we would not hear this. Whereas uh, parks and gardens, for instance, <laughs> we saw their problem. Uh, it appears to me they have no succession plan. They, they, that department is virtually collapsing. And there is no solution in sight. If you look at the uh, issue of planning, do we have planning department in this country? Are they up to tax? <laughs> That's another difficulty. Uh, what are the, the city, uh, the mayors? What are the city managers? Are they also working? <laughs> uh, it's a difficult one. Because if you compare this thing to advanced societies and all that, my God, you see well-arranged system, beautiful atmos uh, you know, environment, and the rest of it. Uh, is it the case that we cannot replicate same or even do better? We can. Yes, we can. But except that we are on holidays. We don't care a hoot. <clears throat> we only draw our salaries and go and sleep. It's very, very unfortunate. All those uh, who are responsible for things of this nature, are they in this country? <laughs> we throw good money out and we don't get any value for money. It's unfortunate. But we, I want to really remind ourselves that, look, and uh, when we continue on this trajectory, a time will come, we will destroy this society and we'll build it at a very high cost. I'm not sure that is what we want. We need to do the needful now and not what we want it. Now, you're a lecturer, so <clears throat> I want to believe you'd be interested in this story. Ongoing BECE, why it picks up seven teachers for exam malpractice and the West African Examinations Council with the assistance of security personnel, has picked up seven teachers, one of them an invigilator at different examination centers for their involvement in examination malpractice. The teachers were allegedly found either solving questions of the ongoing examination or with phones and tablets in their possession with answers to questions in the ongoing exam after they were captured on camera transmitting the materials to the students. One of the teachers, Flora Ashiti, of the St. John Bosco Basic School was found allegedly with a tablet containing questions and answers of the exam at the Trinity Lutheran School in Tema, while Albert Edujan, a teacher of Oxford School Complex in Dunkwa, on Ofin, was apprehended while allegedly capturing images of the religious and moral education questions he had answered in a classroom located on the Dunkwa Senior High Technical School premises. For suspect, Kwating Esiedu Derek, who was an invigilator at the Ashanti and Kranza DAGS GSS, 
he was caught allegedly with uh, captured photos of the integrated science paper 2 that he had shared on a WhatsApp group called uh, Amabame Teachers page, which had uh, 21 participants, and uh, um, among others. But is there any cure for exam malpractice? I mean, think of the TOEFLs, the, the GMATs, the GRAs in different jurisdictions. And even some of the exams I've had to sit in the past, strenuous, very strict um, supervision and all of that. There are some examinations I've had to take at the British Council, for example. And you may be left there, but there are CCTV installations. There are invigilators here and there. I, I, can we ever win this battle? If we want to, we will be able. But if we're a society and we want to stand aloof, relative to this problem, then I'm afraid we're not going to win this war. Because we are, every year is gradually becoming a ritual. We come and discuss this thing. We go to sleep. We don't do anything about it. And what is so painful that sometimes, as this year I've not had uh, parents, you see parents going around to buy questions. And then they will stand on rooftop as moral crusaders. We, we need to bow our head in shame. You see teachers whose duty it is to prepare children adequately so that they can go and demonstrate knowledge on paper. See them. They themselves are corporate. You see children who are not prepared to learn because socialization where we have to inculcate values, values such as what? Sign, uh, you know, staying away from evils such as this and then also be encouraged by parents to do the needful at the time that it matters most. You see parents who are checking their responsibilities. We as a state, we have not introduced stringent measures to, do, uh, to deal with this. Because I believe that sanctioning regime is to uh, relax, that people get away uh, with this type of murder. If we are serious and a serious society, we should be able to put our foot down. And anybody who crosses the line is dealt with without any favor. But what are we doing here? We treat this case uh, what? with uh, kid gloves, and that is what has brought us here. It's a whole mix of factors, and that uh, I believe that the GES, the, the Parents and Teachers Association, and the rest of them, I'm talking about stakeholders, must sit down <coughs> and address it. It's a shame, and it undermines the, the, the quality of our education, and then the certificate that we churn out out of this. It doesn't bode well for anybody. Go to study in other jurisdictions, you realize that there's opportunity for people to cheat, but oh, they will shy away from this. Why can't we do that uh, in this country and do it better? Let's start the process. It's not late. And let's make sure that we win this war once and for all. Let's quickly take a swipe at this as we move on. Niger Janta rebuffs um, US UN backed diplomatic overtures. And it's just Janta on Tuesday rejected the latest diplomatic mission from African countries aimed at restoring constitutional order after a July 26 coup, resisting pressure from the United States and the United Nations to come to the negotiating table. Heads of state from the Economic Community of West African States are preparing for a summit on Thursday to discuss their standoff with the Niger Janta, which defied on August the 6th uh, and August the 6th deadline to reinstate ousted President Mohamed uh, Bazoum. And uh, that is the state of affairs. Some say the Nigerian junta is pushing its luck. But others also say with the sort of institutional chaos in, you know, the sub-region, Western and Central Africa. Uh, I don't need to remind you. Seven of these coups perpetrated in Western and Central Africa oh, since 2020. Seven of them successful out of nine attempts, including in Guinea-Bissau. There is a tale of the tape. And I don't know what our leaders are missing. Or maybe, don't I? Maybe we do. Uh, maybe quick, quick reflections on what is happening so far in Niger, and then we can, we can get a move on. Doc. I am worried, and extremely worried about this, because we struggle to make sure that we arrive at the third wave, well, from the 90s, where we had a lot of kaki kaki leaders, I'm talking about military leaders, you know, taking us for a ride. Thank God we had a democracy and we are working on it gradually. It's not a perfect system, though, but we are doing our best. But so if you have soldiers coming in, then we must do self-introspection and see where we have gone wrong, all right? It is clear we don't need a soothsayer to find out. 
issues of bad governance, issues of what exclusion, issues of what poverty, and the rest of them. Having said this, it is not a license for soldiers uh, to, to venture into politics. If they really want to, they need to share their uniform and become civilian and join uh, that civilized what, enterprise. What we are seeing now uh, is what a decline of democracy. And for me, it's worrying because it can have what negative effect on other countries that are stable. And the impact is not good for everybody. I think that all of us must continue the advocacy. We must continue to what drum into the ears of people that soldiers can never save any meaningful society in terms of what government. They have their role as defenders of the constitution and the country, but in politics, look, I shy away from this because General Okran, uh, who was one of the architects of 19th century school, has told us that the soldiers have not been trained how to govern uh, a civilian society. And if they want to do that, they need to share their evil. And that uh, society should not heal them. We should do everything to make sure that we restore democracy. Though it has its own problems, but for me, it is the only game in town and it's the only system that will give us hope. Mm. Daily Guide newspaper in the next uh, three to four minutes will be out of here. Bolga court remands uh, drug thieves. And oh, a story I, I failed to look at in the Daily uh, Graphic newspaper. So that story is on page six. I'll get to it. Headmaster chops BEC registration cash. And uh, we've heard the, um, the education minister saying that that headmaster is going to be hot. Cecilia, Cecilia, and of course that's Cecilia Dapa, stolen $1 million dollars. Suspects bought six mansions and two cars. There's also NDC Sachs Kumeu Women's Organizer over Allen and Minority Chases Bank of Ghana Governor, which I've already taken a swipe at. So I'll look at those two stories. Uh, I, I don't think the Cecilia one, I think it's clear right from the banner headline. But let's go to page uh, six. There's, uh, huh, yeah. A Bolgatanga circuit court has remanded in custody the three people arrested by police in connection with the stealing of assorted medicines from the Upper East Regional Hospital's medical store in Bolgatanga. Hey! Sumaila Amadu, the judge, remanded Rahim Fasilat Bridget Noyel, and uh, I don't know whether that's Noyeli or Noyel, and Raymond Asoke to reappear in court on August the 22nd, 2023, after they pleaded not guilty to three counts of stealing, abetment, and conspiracy to steal. They were found with a taxi, with uh, a saloon car with registration number GE153221, carting off 12 stolen boxes of essential drugs in the car, whereas 22 more boxes of drugs labeled not for sale were discovered in the abandoned uh, structure that they had taken it to. And maybe a quick swipe at this. Wife accused of poisoning her husband's coffee with bleach for months. Now, a wife poisoned the coffee of her estranged U.S. Air Force husband with bleach for months, according to court documents. Melody Johnson was arrested on the 18th of July after her husband submitted videos to police allegedly showing her pouring the cleaning product into his coffee machine. Uh, quick thoughts? Very difficult human interest story. Um, if you take the Ghanaian one, the good news is that they are in appropriate forum. Let the court deal with it. We'll come back. Uh, the woman poisoning, trying to poison the husband. I don't know why. Uh, it's a difficulty. But I believe that, well, we'll find solutions to this one day. The Finder newspaper now. Uh, fresh discoveries of how Cecilia Dapa's stolen cash was dissipated in buying properties. But then there's also... $114 million needed to complete Saglemi houses. It will increase the cost of 1,506 units to 310.4 million. Yesterday, I hosted Sam George, member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. He says, even per the terms of the land, his family land, which was let out to government, they cannot go on this private um, endeavor. And that if they do, he even spoke about the fact that $7 million worth of some of the fittings and others were stolen. And at a point, his team had apprehended some police officers, national security staff, who were supposed to be protecting the facility, who were actually stealing everything from toiletries and all of that, which has led to the state of Saglemi. Now we are proposing Pukwase, but if you have one thing, you protect it before you go for another. I don't know what your take is on that. There's also repeal all laws that impede media freedom. That's according to a law lecturer. And I'll wrap with uh, the BNFT. 
debt market braces for higher government borrowing and refinancing obligations. And then uh, GRA starts 10% tax deduction on lottery wins. There's also government takes crucial step to fortify financial management systems. So we have the Saglemi story. I think that's the major one uh, we could look at and wrap up with, Doc. I think I'll, um, uh, for the Saglemi story, it is so right. unfortunate. Mm. And it's not only peculiar to Saglemi. We have other buildings languishing in the bush. True. Talk about the buildings of President Kufo, the affordable buildings I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And then we have other ones such as Saglemi. Uh, we are quick to proposing things of this nature. Beautiful policy, no doubt about that. But to, you know, carry it to a logical conclusion, we always what uh, we are found wanting. Why? If you look at the direct principle of state policy, it's saying that all government projects, and without exception, if a government starts and then loses power, the next right. government must continue. Is it what we are doing? We claim that we are the head, we are people who support democracy, we are believers of rule of law and all that. But these things are all what? In vain. It's in theory. We don't believe it. We only throw them to deceive people into believing that we are law-abiding people and we care for them. We don't care a who. Because look at the resources. If you put all the resources that we have sunk into this project, I tell you, we'll not go to IMF or World Bank. Why are we doing this to ourselves? I don't know. But it's unfortunate. But we, the citizens also, we have never been vigilant in this regard. We should make sure that government with any party, which that is, we punish that party. Okay. Throw it away and bring in parties that will be able to work and then salvage these things. That is the way to go. Thank you, Doc. Always refreshing catching you on a Wednesday morning. And I wish you uh, the very best of the day. I don't know, uh, are you in that exam period as well? Yes, we are writing. Right. We are writing. Right. And we are vigilant. And we are, <laughs> as always, live on, you can trust when we are writing exam. See, Good to hear. There, and examination officers and vigilators, we are all alert. Great to hear, uh, as you would expect, of my alma mater at the University of Ghana. Thank you very much, uh, Doc, for joining the conversation. Dr. Kwame Asasanti, political scientist, uh, lecturer, and of course, head of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana. Uh, a number of messages I cannot read, but this one, who do? Abu Bakar Sadiq says, Good morning, Ben. Watching you uh, from Idris Seche Dumase. Will Dr. Addison and his deputy stepping down help us ease our current situation? That's a question. Some of the others are too lengthy for me to look at. But right as we cap it off, the segment is always brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. What are they offering you if you're a man, prostate screening? If you're a woman, fertility screening. Gratis, for free. You won't pay anything. All you have to do, reach out to them at any of their branches here in Accra. Spintex opposite the Shell signboard. Kumase Krodom Abwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex. Takradi Anaji State Tema Community 22. Techi Manhanswe and Siyama and Zama. You can reach them on 0244-867-068 or 0274-234-321. End point homeopathic clinic, the end to chronic disease. But just the start of sports. All the action coming your way, courtesy the sports crew and Muftal Nabila Abdullah. Do say.